most people considered you know, Oracle's Java to be somehow different. It's not. And so that's why alternatives are so easy to you know, move away, migrate from Oracle to another open JDK based um, Java platform because it all is the same source base. The same source base that Oracle uses to build their Oracle Java product is the same source base that we use to build uh, the Azul Java product. Hi, this is Yosef Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Scott Sellers, co-founder and CEO of Azul. Scott, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Swap. Appreciate you having me on today. Yeah, of course, we have covered Azul uh, in the past, but since you are here on the show, so I'll be a little bit greedy and ask you some additional questions, which is more about you co-founder the company. Talk about when the company was created and when we, we are in you know, 2024, how much the world has changed, uh, the market has changed, and where you see, you know, like the companies like Shul are actually playing even more important roles. So just give us uh, a little, you know, background of the company and where we are today. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to, to talk about Azul well and, and our history. Um, I, you know, I, I guess in, in broad sense, um, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. Uh, in the 90s, I started a graphics chip company called 3D Effects that ultimately was acquired by NVIDIA. So, you know, I've, I've always been a very technology centric person. And uh, ultimately, we we founded and started Azul in 2002. So we're a company with a, a 20 year heritage. Um, and, you know, the one thing that stayed constant throughout that time is, you know, for us, it's been a focus on bringing value uh, specifically for the Java platform to enterprise customers around the globe. And even though over the course of our history, we've changed the different types of products that we offer and how we serve the customer, the unwavering commitment for us is being being the best vendor uh, that we can for, for our very important large enterprise customers, as well as um, staying you know, very focused on Java and really being you know, the best vendor, in our opinion, um, that there is in terms of being able to provide Java platforms for our enterprise customers. If you look at Java, Java is one of the most mature, one of the most used. People don't even know, so, you know, DVD players. I don't know if DVD players, but a lot of, you know, those devices that we have, it's all running on Java. So we cannot even talk about that. But if you look at the modern world where we talk about microservices, breaking things down is smaller thing we talk about. Of course, data centers are there. We talk about cloud. We talk about edge. We talk about IoT. You know, Apple is coming with Vision Pro tomorrow. Uh, so the whole world has changed. Talk about how is Java being used today in this modern world? Java certainly, you know, when it was created in the mid '90s, uh, you know, out of Sun, of course, and then ultimately uh, Oracle acquired Sun uh, 2009, I believe. Um, you know, people don't talk as much about Java because it's just assumed to be a given now. Um, you know, it really is is it continues to be the dominant language in the enterprise and you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different open source projects that are based on the Java platform in general and all sorts of infrastructure software all based on Java. So, you know, it's, it's not top of mind like, say, AI or, you know, some whatever the, you know, the big topic of the day is. But the thing about Java is it is everywhere. And, and since it is so prominently used, it's still a very important uh, piece of the overall application stack and one which continues to evolve and thrive. And I'd say the Java community overall is is the healthiest uh, that it's ever been. Momentum continues to be strong. There's the most number of Java programmers in the world than any other uh, platform or language. And so it is it is the platform of choice. So, you know, getting specifically to your question, where is Java used? It's used everywhere. And, um, you know, I, I, I I, I say that flippantly, but it's but it's literally true. Um, you know, as a consumer, as you think about you know where you may be interacting with Java, even though you may not know it. You know, as you're driving your car, the infotainment system uh, that you see is uh, may very well be powered by Java. You know, behind the scenes, uh, as you engage with your your bank, um, that that online trading platform you may be using, or just the overall user interface. Very likely, all that's written in Java. Uh, as you go to your favorite coffee store and you use your, you know, your your uh, your mobile device to order your coffee ahead, and that's paid for by like an Apple Pay or a Google Pay. Well, all of that 
electronic sophistication behind that to keep tabs of who you are and keep track of, say, your rewards and who's handling the payment. Well, pretty much, very likely, all written in Java. And so, you know, Java is is is, is really uh, used predominantly and, and impacts all of our lives, you know, hundreds, if not more, times a day, just based on the applications that are written in it and how that, that, uh, that ultimately um benefits of the consumer and that's the case with you know linux kernel or open mainframe people don't realize it you know but you know every transaction you make uh, the whole internet so yeah it's, these are some of the like boy bag bows we do like to talk about the new shiny object but these are the technologies and sometimes being boring actually is good right being boring being stable boring means stable boring means uh secure it means uh reliable means available and i think you're 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 likening the java platform to the os is is exactly right we use that analogy quite a bit because just like people don't talk about operating systems so much anymore uh, it's a given and there are you know every application underneath it uh, has an operating system to run it and uh, just like you know most applications in enterprise have a java runtime uh, underneath to run it so uh, it, it's a very important uh, really critical piece of overall enterprise application software stack. You're absolutely right about the penetration of these technologies. Now, uh, as the adoption, I mean, it's not the screen, wide spread adoption, it also really depend on the licensing model and pricing models. So other vendors can leverage some of these technologies. Uh, recently, uh, there was a pricing licensing change and we are seeing this kind of trend in the industry. Talk a bit about what kind of changes were made and what impact it has not only on the user base, on the whole vendor ecosystem, which are using this, and also a lot of companies who, as you mentioned in the cards, they may or may not care that much, but a lot of vendors who do provide things on top of that. So I just want to talk to you to look at pricing and licensing change from a holistic view. What do you see is going to be the impact? As we mentioned, um, you know, while while Java was originally invented by Sun, obviously that transitioned to Oracle um, with that acquisition. And you know, to first be very fair, I, I think Oracle has done wonderful things with the Java community. And um, you know, overall, I would say they have found a careful balance of a win-win strategy where you know not only are they making a lot of money off Java, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But they also have been very good to the community, and I think the, the open source community where Java de is developed, which is a, an open source project called OpenJDK, is a thriving example of how uh, company and community participants can work together, even though they may be competing, to evolve a technology platform such as Java. Every six months, a new version of Java comes out that has you know, new features and new capabilities, uh, also, you know, constantly listening to the needs of, of the DevOps community. Um, and as a result of that, that is why Java continues to thrive. Um, all that being said, um, Oracle, you know, clearly uh, has a stated intent to, you know, make a lot of money off Oracle, uh, off Java, and they have continued to do so. And, you know, one of their strategies is to continue to, to alter and change the licensing and pricing model for how they monetize Java. And um, as a result, their Java business continues to grow, you know, quite quite favorably. Uh, several billion dollars is uh, sort of the rumored amount that uh, the amount of business that Oracle uh, does simply by by selling uh, support services and, and overall support for Java. What that means ultimately, though, is that as they continue to evolve their pricing and licensing strategy, it creates a lot of confusion for enterprise customers that need a, a supported Java platform, a fully compliant, fully backed, you know, industry grade with, with you know, 24 seven follow the sun kind of support models. And so, you know, in any sort of technology um, uh, 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 software in general, you need choice. And I think that's really the, the message that is, has resonated with enterprise customers um, and enterprise users is that Oracle is not the only game in town. And the pricing change that Oracle made last year, we're actually just coming up now on the anniversary uh, of that change was quite profound and frankly, in our opinion, nonsensical. They moved away from the way that they used to uh, charge for Java, which 
kind of made sense. The more Java that you use, the more you paid. That's how most enterprise software is is priced and, and licensed. A year ago, they moved to an employee-based pricing, which really makes no sense intuitively. You could have 10,000 people in an organization, and if only a single person uses Java on a single desktop computer, well, the company is still liable and has to pay for all 10,000 employees. So it really is a very nonsensical pricing model. And as you might expect, uh, once that pricing model was was announced, there was a lot of people, you know, throwing up their hands saying, what is this? There must be a better way. And uh, companies like ourselves, um, you know, we have, we're the experts um, in terms of being able to successfully educate uh, enterprises as to how truly there, there can there is choice uh, completely functionally equivalent very simple to migrate from uh, the Oracle Java onto other platforms like uh, Zoll's platform and um, as a result our business is uh, really continues to thrive uh, as Oracle continues to make changes to their licensing and, and their pricing policies there was a lot of kind of Confusion there as well, uh, and sometimes you know, not everybody can really go deeper and understand and price chain licensing chain. They lead to confusion. If one of your customers, potential customers, or ecosystem player, they are listening to this, can you just say something to demystify that confusion? That what is, and then what? Of course, you did talk about you know you'll, uh, what what options they are there. So let's talk about you know just demystify the confusion and that you know it's not you know the doors are not closing. There are there's a very healthy ecosystem out there around Java Open JDK. So so talk about that, please. That is a, a good point. And still, you know, even though Open JDK has been around for a long time since I think it was 2007 when Open JDK was was originally created. That was when Sun open sourced. Um, you know, the job in general. And so I'd say one of the main points of, of lack of understanding or, or confusion, if you will, that, you know, we see a lot in the enterprise customer base is many people still believe that Oracle is the only place that you can get Java from. And, um, or, you know, the, the sort of derivative misunderstanding of that is that Oracle somehow has a different version of Java than you know what might be available from others both of those are simply not true um, and as we educate um, you know the the java community in general and our enterprise customers all of all java comes from the same place it comes from the open source project open jdk it's freely available for anyone to use based on the open source licenses that it's licensed under and so as a result of that there is no unique competitive advantage that Oracle has relative to any other company that's involved with OpenJDK. And that is a point of confusion because I think most people considered you know, Oracle's Java to be somehow different. It's not. And so that's why alternatives are so easy to you know move away, migrate from Oracle to another OpenJDK based um, Java platform because it all is the same source base. The same source base that Oracle uses to build their Oracle Java product is the same source base that we use to build uh, the Azul Java products. And so there's no, you know, you hear about these terms like, um, um, you know, clean room engineering or you're, you're kind of, you know, reinventing something based on a specification. There's none of that. That's why we literally are functionally identical to Oracle because we're using the same source base as theirs as they are. And so that's actually, I think, a very important element also for why Java has thrived, not just because you know we collectively as a community continue to invest considerably in evolving the platform, but because there is choice. And I think history has been very clear to show proprietary technologies typically lose. And so open technologies typically thrive. And, you know, certainly Linux is a poster child example of that. Um, it used to be people talked about Unix or other types of proprietary operating systems. Um, even Microsoft open sourced uh, pieces of Windows, which I think was an important element uh, of why they've continued to be successful. Um, and so open source is the way. And so I think the reason that Java continues to, you know, to be so dominant is because it's open source enterprises and, and developers and DevOps teams understand they have choice, if not from Oracle, can go to Azul, can go to Eclipse, can go to, you know, other vendors that create open JDK based 
uh, Java platforms. And that de-risks the decision for, for enterprise users. And I think that's a really important element when you're thinking about um, choosing a technology is to ensure that no one gets locked in to a given vendor. We have kind of, especially in the cloud or cloud anywhere, new models are emerging. Some are saying, you know, usage-based models. Some are talking about the consumption-based models. So it's not just like, you know, per seed model. Uh, do you feel that, of course, you know, uh, Oracle is not here, so we cannot talk on their behalf or what they intend, but what kind of mo model you see might be ideal, not just in the case of Java, but Java-like technologies so that the the whole ecosystem is thriving and also it's much more, as you also said, you know, uh, realistic and, you know, companies are comfortable with these technologies or you feel that uh, since Oracle also has a lot of experience in this field, so what they are doing is uh, an apt kind of reaction or respond to the growth of the ecosystem. I think companies like Oracle who, who commit significant engineering dollars and, and people to continue to evolve the platform and, you know, as well, does the same thing, right? We, we, we you know, spend an awful lot of money evolving the platform. Commercial companies have every right to charge for the products that they, they provide and they support. So that, that's fair game, right? It's important, you know, and the enterprises that, of course, buy our products, they need healthy companies and healthy vendors to support those products. So it is all fair game. I, I think the key thing is, is fair. Right. And, um, you know, so long as there is choice and, and again, because of Oracle's participation in the open JDK community, by definition, since that is an open community and open source code, it means that other vendors like Azul can come in and offer functionally equivalent products and allow enterprises to make the choice if they want to continue to um, to um, uh, partner with Oracle and use the Oracle uh, Java product, which also comes from OpenJDK, that's great. You know, it may cost more and they may not have the same support experience as they might have with smaller, more nimble, kind of more focused vendors like Azul. But at the end of the day, choice is what ultimately matters. And I think that's really a, a testament, A, to open source in general, and, you know, why, you know, we are, you know, we built a business based on, on open source uh, practices. And I think by and large, uh, most of the of the you know emerging software uh, vendors of recent history have had a very strong open source mentality, if not actual open source products. Uh, open source is is fundamental to the evolution of of software technologies, and so um, you know I think it's been a win win in, in the Java community as well um, that allows for companies like Oracle to continue to invest in the platform, but also allows companies like Azul to also have a thriving business as a result of, of you know, open source code that uh, that we can also add value for. Scott, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this uh, topic. Thanks for, you know, clarifying some doubts that may be there, confusion that may be there within the ecosystem. And as Azul, I would love to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Thank you, Swap. Really appreciate your time and appreciate the opportunity to, to talk more about Java and Azul.